Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about two potentially major tropical cyclones that are upcoming. We talked about them yesterday, we have a lot more news to talk about today. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and pinned comment down below. That's also where you can find our very exciting Discord server and interactive Facebook group. Now, for today's comment of the day... We asked you guys yesterday if you think they will become tropical storms. Now, for today's video, we're going to be asking you guys, do you think that one or both will become hurricanes? Let me know in the comments down below, and let me know why, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, let's get right into things, and before we do, I want to mention, I will be going live later today talking about these systems. It'll be a kind of an update from now till then. Uh, and also, I'm going to be talking about the overall hurricane season too. So it's going to be very exciting. You can hit the reminder. I'm going to be kind of scheduling it right after I upload this. So you can hit the reminder to make sure you get reminded when that's up. But be on the lookout for that for sure. It's going to be a lot of fun interacting with you guys. And you can ask any questions you'd like. Now we're taking a look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook for Invest 97L, which is the Caribbean's more southern uh, system here, and as you can see, it has a 20% chance of development within the next 48 hours, which is relatively low, obviously. But what we're going to do is we're going to move on in just a moment and take a look at the five day graphical tropical weather outlook for this one, and it's going to be a complete different story. All right, and for now, as you can see, for the five day outlook, we have a 60% chance for this system to develop here in the next five days and it is expected then I mean it's a you know over a 50% chance so it is expected that this one will develop uh, heading towards the Yucatan Peninsula or potentially in that little sweet spot there in between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula which would be extremely bad a lot of these countries obviously uh, are you know a lot poorer than the United States and seeing these tropical systems heading towards them is very unfortunate obviously I'll keep you guys completely up to date also Jamaica is in there so be on the lookout for that Let's move on and talk about 98L. Yesterday it didn't have a name and now it finally does, Invest 98L. And as you can see, this is the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook for 98L. We have a 70% chance of development here within the next two days. So more likely than not, we will be talking about probably a tropical storm within the next two days. And on the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook for Invest 98L, we have a 90% chance of development. So this one's basically going to develop whether... Uh, you like it or not, it's it's pretty much going to happen, uh, and it's heading generally towards Puerto Rico, but odds are it'll probably go north of there, fortunately, but after that becomes a question mark. The United States seems to be a potential landing spot for this one if it survives to there, uh, if not just offshore, but I'm also seeing the potential for a Gulf entry later on. Obviously, it's so far out, anything can happen, but for the next days, I'm going to be talking about these systems, rest assured. What we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to talk about the satellite imagery for both of these systems and then the spaghetti models, the intensity guidance, things of that nature, and just go over basically all the possibilities. All right, so here's the satellite imagery for Invest 97L. And as you can see, there are some very tall clouds in there. You can also see there's some new smaller areas of clouds developing there. That indicates that there is some intensification going on. We see those whites and the pinks inside. That's very, very tall clouds. If this storm can get its act together, I could see uh, us being in that 20% chance and seeing this one develop within the next two days. I do see it as a possibility, but not as a likelihood, I would say. Here's Invest 98L, and as you can see, it's kind of split as of right now, uh, but I'm sure it'll come together. Obviously, again, we have a more than more likely than not chance that this one will develop within the next 48 hours and almost 100% chance that this one will develop within the next five days. So it is going to come together at some point. It's really just about when, not if. And let's go ahead and take a look at the spaghetti models for Invest 97L. As of right now, as you can see, we do have a possibility of that kind of Central America or Yucatan Peninsula entry there on a few of these models. There's not a lot of models on board, but we can see that pink one does have it kind of hitting Cuba and then the Florida Panhandle. Basically, there isn't a lot of models that have hopped on board with this one, but I think we are going to see many, many more uh, very soon. However, basically anywhere from a Central America, Yucatan Peninsula, or a Cuba impact entering the Gulf, Either of these options basically brings the Gulf entry as a possibility. So we're going to need to watch it very, very closely. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at our ensemble models, the GEFS, 
the uh, GEPS, which is our Canadian ensemble model, and then the intensity guidance for this one. And then we're going to take a look at that Africa system or 98L after this. All right, so here we are taking a look at Invest 97L on the GEFS. So uh, a little bit earlier, actually, this, the, the 0Z run of last night, this is the 6Z run we're taking a look at, but the 0Z run actually had this one pretty much breaking up. The 6Z run is a lot more on board, but it does have that Yucatan Peninsula impact, which would be very bad, obviously. There's a lot of land there, uh, a lot of beautiful areas there. I've actually traveled there before absolutely wonderful area but unfortunately it does look like this one has it in its crosshairs and then a gulf entry the only problem i have here is there's a high pressure system there in the western gulf right now uh and unless that moves out of the way i don't see how it could enter there i think it would be more likely to curve more towards uh, the florida panhandle after the yucatan peninsula more on the eastern edge of those like the ones that chill louisiana mississippi alabama i don't think a texas impact is very likely though i do see it as a possibility obviously so i don't want to say it's impossible Here's our Canadian ensemble model, which is all over the place, uh, but actually most of them have it going through that little sweet spot that I was mentioning before, the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba in between there, and then kind of hitting the, the panhandle of Florida, possibly Mississippi or Alabama. However, they pretty much show anything as a possibility, and that's kind of the trend with the Canadian model. It shows that a lot. Let's look at the intensity guidance, and for now... Uh, we see most of these have it entering as a tropical storm and potentially becoming a strong tropical storm, uh, but there is some drop-offs. I think there's some shear it's going to interact with, and a lot of the models are picking up on that as of right now. Uh, this is the 6Z run, so we're going to await the 12Z run. Again, we're going to be streaming later, so we will talk about the more updated uh, intensity guidance. Also, I'm going to be showing our 7-day outlook, because in my, my videos, I usually only do a 5-day outlook for these systems, and that's what I'm going to do today, but I'm also going to show the 7-day one, and I'm also going to show my intensity forecast for both of these as well in the stream, so if you want more content, I would highly recommend you join us there. There is two models that show this one becoming a hurricane as of right now, a Category 1. Uh, one of them shows a Category 2. I expect that to flip-flop all over the place. The, the models with the intensity guidance have been struggling a lot this year, so don't take it too seriously. Take it with a grain of salt, I would say. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at Invest 98L, the uh, the spaghetti models, the intensity guidance, and then after that, we're going to get into our five-day outlooks for Invest 98L and 97L, and then we're going to end the video. All right, now here we are taking a look at Invest 98L and our spaghetti models, and they seem to be pretty... Uh, confident in this track of going just north of Puerto Rico. Again, I think that's the most likely outcome, but there is a pretty good chance also that it could impact those areas. We're pretty far out. We're about five days out from when it would be hitting Puerto Rico, uh, Dominican Republic, Haiti. So we really want to keep our eyes peeled for that area because that is in kind of the crosshairs for this one. Also, the Bahamas seems to be a possible landing spot. And then it becomes a question mark after that. Uh, a lot of the models don't see a curve out to sea, although I did in the thumbnail obviously make that a possibility because I know it's so far out it could happen still. Uh, but also a gulf entry is possible uh, or an east coast impact. So this one is so far out really anything is possible. Uh, so we're going to need to really, really watch it closely here. Uh, but the spaghetti models seem pretty confident that it is going to be heading just north of Puerto Rico and towards the Bahamas, potentially hitting Florida or heading into the gulf. Uh, or maybe even just going north after or just before hitting Florida. Really, anything's on the table. Now, let's take a look at our GEFS model, and this one's quite interesting. Uh, and really, this one takes a pretty interesting uh, curve north and then back eastward uh, at some point on every single one of these members. And a lot of these have this as a very, very strong storm. Reds would indicate somewhere like between 960 and 980 millibars. Uh, but a lot of these show pinks or purples, which is between 930 and 950, which is a very very strong storm. Uh, very interesting to see this model showing this, but the curve is almost more interesting because that almost seems like a pattern we'd typically be in uh, maybe around October. We would see a track like this happen a lot. Uh, we're going to need to watch it closely. This is mostly the reason I had that out the sea option as a possibility because some of these ensemble members are definitely on board with that, and that would be the least impactful track, so we have to really keep our fingers crossed for that. Here's the Canadian ensemble model, and this one's kind of all over the place as well. I see a couple with a gulf entry, uh, two with an east coast impact, and then maybe four of these showing that kind of best case scenario out the sea track. That's really what we can hope for, like I said. But there is a few of these members, again, that show it hitting Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Cuba, or even the Bahamas. All of these areas are really going to need to watch out because there's many members that have it going many different places. Basically, everything's possible, like I said before. Gulf, East Coast, out the sea, even south of Puerto Rico isn't completely out of the possibilities. 
So we're going to need to watch every single possibility very closely. Now the intensity guidance for this one is where I start to get very concerned. Every single model here shows it at least becoming a tropical storm. Uh, but we have a majority of these showing it at least become a category one. And you can see a lot of intensification happens after day five. They're pretty much all still trending stronger at the end of this model run. Uh, which means basically they're not dropping at any point, basically, except for this HWFI. But that one does that every single time, basically on the last two hours of its run. I don't know why it does that. It's pretty much a glitch. I'm almost a sh I'm almost positive it's a glitch, that rapid uh, drop off and in intensification. But most of these do have an upswing at the end, which is very concerning to see. We have maybe four models showing this become a category one and four showing it not become a category one. That's pretty concerning, and we have three showing it become a Category 2. So this one is going to be interesting. It could become a very strong storm. We're going to watch this one very closely for probably the next week or maybe more. We're going to be tracking this one closely. Now here's our uh, outlook for Invest 97L. Pretty much looks the same as yesterday. Uh, I'm a little bit more concerned for Central America here. I think that's definitely becoming a more probable impact zone. That would obviously make it a weaker storm. So that would be good news for the United States, but obviously very bad news for Central America. Either way, if it enters the Gulf, I think it would have an easy time redeveloping or developing uh, depending on where it hits. Let's go ahead and take a look at Invest 98L, our forecast here. And basically, again, same story. It looks pretty much the same as yesterday, heading generally just straight towards uh, the Caribbean, either hitting Puerto Rico, going south of Puerto Rico, most likely going north of Puerto Rico, though. But still, uh, we're going to need to watch out for Puerto Rico, Haiti, Dominican Republic, and especially the Bahamas that seem to be right in the crosshair of this one. Everybody needs to look out. I'm going to keep updating everybody on what's going to be going on. So stay tuned. Again, we're going to have a really good live stream later. It's going to be pretty depthy with the whole hurricane season and both of these storms. We're going to have pretty much a giant update for everything. I would love, love, love to see you there. Now, yesterday I asked you guys which of these storms, if any or both, will become tropical storms. And Falcon Doip said, I think definitely the one in the main development region, which is our 98L, and maybe the one in the Caribbean, which is 97L. And I have to agree, obviously, as you saw, 98L pretty much has, you know, a 90% chance of becoming a tropical storm. The one in the Caribbean is more like 50-50. So uh, I think this was a really good call. And this was 12 hours ago. So really nice job there, Falcon. All right, now for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for being patrons. We have two diamond patrons, though, Mad Birds and Mark J. I appreciate you guys. And then our platinum patron, Donna Carnes. I appreciate all of you that help support the channel. If you would like to help support the channel and receive awesome content in return, you can join our Patreon uh, in the description or the pinned comment down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.